We're here. It is the final day of the NBA regular season. 15 games on Sunday. Nonsense ready to abound. Let's talk about what we know. Let's talk about who might play, who might not play, who we can stream in for this dastardly final day of the NBA season. But the big question is, is Michael Bolton here? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I own the world's smallest large screen TV. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I've got a competitive side and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day, all season. We are free and available on all platforms. Allow me to double bang you and get you on the audio side, on the video side and thumbing up and subscribing and hitting the follow and all the reviews and all that stuff. But also allow me to get somewhat uh, emotional is not the right word because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a robot, let's be fair. If this turned out to be AI, you wouldn't know any difference. But it has been a great season once again. And we are like 600 episodes deep, I think, through the, the season. And this is the time for me to transition from um, regular season mode into off-season mode, which then turns into draft season mode, which then turns into pre-season mode. So this is the final regular season show. Again, thank you, everybody, for being here, for those of you who have stuck around. There won't be a show tomorrow, but then we go into a bunch of shows next week. I do have the schedule around somewhere, a loose schedule of what I'm going to do. We're going to do stuff talking about um, how the fantasy playoffs worked. What are our takeaways there? We'll do NBA award show. We're going to do um, a review or or a playoff projections. We're going to go through and and say who I think is going to win all the playoffs. We're going to look at uh, fantasy league settings and ways to approach that. Look at hits and misses through the fantasy draft process and guys that we got right right or wrong. Um, That's all coming up over the next week or so. Then we do some team reviews. Then we do uh, NBA draft stuff, a bunch of things happening. But this is the transitional period. So again, make sure you are still subscribed. Make sure you are still following because again, I, I don't want to talk to nobody. But I do this. I use this period of time to A, put a lot of work in, a lot of research work in, which carries us all the way through the season. But also it's a time for me sort of to experiment, try new things presentation-wise, visually, um, flow of the show, all that sort of stuff, just to get some different feedback. Got a new camera I'm going to be debuting at some point, trying to just work all those things out. So that's how things go. But again, just a heartfelt thanks to everybody who's either been a listener of the show on audio, who's been, of course, a double banger. You, you guys are the best. Who's watched a video, who's ever given me a thumb, who's ever rang my bell, who was ever a Basketball Monster subscriber, who was ever a part of the Locked On Fantasy basketball bowl leagues it was ever part of the LOFB FBI World Cup so many great things a uh, quick update on my rotisserie league where me and Mitch Casey were fighting out for the number one slot Mitch currently is just edging at the moment just edging me out he's on 73 roto points I'm on 72 roto points when I told you about this two days ago I said I think Mitch is going to get me by one point we currently sit at one point difference there is a unbelievable outside chance that I can overtake him. But all that requires is because we've both hit our max games. We can't do any more. But there are a few other teams. One of them, Alex Reclean. I think one of them, Stan. I know Stan Sun's finished. Um, Dan Pal- Thunder Dan Palio, who's got uh, four or five games left to play on Sunday. They can get those games and hopefully take a point away from Mitch and not take away one from me, which would push me ahead of him. That's I, I don't think it's going to happen. But that's my only hope, is that they take points away from Mitch and jump me ahead of him. But it was a great season, a very, very uh, f- good fight to the finish. And Mitch, uh, if you do win that, congratulations to you, my guy, for uh, for knocking me off, not only in the industry pickup in the semis, but then taking me out in the uh, the Roto League. But well done, if that is ending up uh, what ends up happening. That is a very long introduction. For me to, I don't even know if I double banged you with the the thumb up graphic. I think I did. Oh, we're good. Um, What we do need to tell you is we are looking at Sunday. Now, 
we know there are 15 games on in the NBA. There are two times that these games are on. All of the Eastern Conference games are at 1 p.m. Eastern. All of the Western Conference games are at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. With the exception of the Spurs, who play the Pistons in the only cross-conference rivalry because the NBA knew those teams would be trash. And what a prediction from the NBA to suggest that those teams would be trash, considering they have um, two of the four worst records in the entire NBA, although the Spurs have uh, definitely taken a step forward of late. They obviously doesn't impact seeding. So there's going to be none of this. Well, we know that this team has won this seeding spot. Um, therefore, we can sit our guys because of all that for the playoff teams anyway, that's all happening at the same time. We have got majority of injury reports in. There's a few we don't have in just yet. Um, well, the Clippers actually just, wow, that's some interesting changes there. So we'll talk about that later on, um, which I still don't believe they're going to do. But even if you don't have guys on the injury report, this is a very long intro. The Charlotte Horns, for example, put out an injury report an hour later, chucked two extra guys onto it, which changes everything completely about what they're going to do. And even if guys are available to play, what if they play 10 minutes or 12 minutes. So we're going to go through motivations for each team and then we talk about individual stream options. Again, apologies. That is a long intro. I thought it was necessary. Maybe it wasn't, but let's talk. First game. We have got the Charlotte Hornets going to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like I said, the Hornets decided to update the injury report. So you can't see this on the screen, but both Brandon Miller and Miles Bridges, their um, mutual... Mutual wrist injuries have both flared up in the last hour after they put their official injury report in, so they're both questionable, as is Big Dick Dick Riches, as is Davis Bertans, as is Vasa Misic. I would suggest that these Hornets guys, whether they, there's no, to me, there's no reason that any of them should play. There's well, actually what you can see here the Hornets need to lose, the Cavs need to win. So that should give you an idea why do the Hornets need to lose? Because their lottery position is not settled. If they win and Portland and San Antonio lose, well, they all go into a three-way tie with the same record, and then we get down to tiebreakers. Then to actually get the spot in terms of the lottery, it just you just split the odds. And the, the tiebreaker is what changes your downside. So if you finish in the third slot, the lowest you can finish is seven. But if you end up in that three-way tiebreaker and you end up in the five spot, well, you can finish down as low as nine. So that's important. They need to lose to lock themselves into number three, Charlotte. The Cavs, well, they need to win because they theoretically can move up as high as two. Now, they are locked into a top four seed. They are getting a home court first round series, but they can finish second, third, or fourth, the Cavs. But they don't seem to care that much because they're sitting Levert, they're sitting Mitchell, Dean Wade is out, Sam Merrill is out, and Darius Garland is doubtful. I would expect limited minutes for Mobley and Allen as well. This has got disaster written all over it. I don't think Misich plays. I don't think Batans plays. I don't think Richards plays. I think Miller and Bridges will play limited minutes when they're out there. Because like last game, we got 15 minutes for Bridges. We got 14 minutes for Miller. We got 16 minutes for Misich. There's just no reason for these guys to play at all. So be ready for other guys to step up. Yeah. We're going to be, that's that's how we're trying to approach this. But we don't know because teams do, well, the Bulls, for example, I don't know what they're doing, but we'll talk about them a little bit later. The Nets and the Sixers. All right. The Brooklyn Nets have absolutely zero motivation. They don't have their draft picks, so they don't need to lose. They're not winning to get a change in seed. They don't have any motivation. The Sixers need to win because they currently sit where they can be fifth, Sixth, seventh, or eighth. And you want to get to six. So you don't you're not in the plane. Again, that requires other results to go your way, but they can finish between fifth and eighth, and that is massive. They need to win. Cam Johnson is out for Brooklyn. Uh Dorian Finney Smith is out. Don't know why I didn't write out there. Dennis Schroeder is out. Dayron Sharp is out. Interestingly, um Nick Claxton and Cam Thomas are not on the injury report. No idea why they would play. Um, Mikhail Bridges is on the injury report. He has not gone over 25 minutes for three straight. Do you think, I do, do you think that Bridges, Claxton, and Thomas all just play the first quarter and then they're done? We know what Bridges does. He loves to check in, plays three games, go, look at me, I've never missed a game. Yet, um, yeah, plays these interesting three-second games. I don't know why he does it, um, but that happens. So that's sort of where I sit there, but I just 
don't know about Thomas and I don't know about Claxon. Obviously, if Thomas is out, Lonnie Walker is going to go through the roof. Jalen Wilson is going to go through. Everyone gets more shots in that scenario. But uh, for the Sixers, Embiid is questionable. Melton is questionable. He played five minutes last game. KJ Martin is questionable. These guys need to win. The Nets don't care, but you'd think they would lose. But they still need to put these guys out there and get good minutes into them to get that win. The Sixers need to get the win, as we have uh, mentioned many, many times. As I just try and figure out where I am. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Tickets, events, we love them. It's great. You want to go and enjoy something, local sport, festivals, music, comedy, theater. Game Time's actually like officially a ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball as well. And I'm actually heading over to the States in July for Summer League, but we're going to some baseball games. We're going to go see a Padres game down at Petco. We're going to be going to a Dodgers game as well in LA. And yeah, if I want to get my tickets, Game Time is where I'm going to look because so many different ways. Killer deals, like unbelievably priced deals, all in pricing. I don't have to worry about what sort of price these guys are giving me. They just It's just there. I don't have to worry about hidden fees. Unnamed extras. It's all there on that Game Time app. So whatever tickets you're looking for, especially Major League Baseball tickets as an official authorized ticket marketplace, Game Time is going to have those with you. So take the guesswork out of buying your MLB tickets. Go across to... Well, take the guesswork out of buying those tickets with GameTime, as I uh, should have said. Download the GameTime app, create the account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. The terms apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're always applying. Again, create the account, redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off in case you didn't know how to spell LOCKEDONNBA. That is how it's done. Download the GameTime app, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's episode is also brought to you a new bunch of legends. Monopoly Go. I've been told by many people that I'm a competitive person. It's true. I do like to win. Why wouldn't I? Who, who wants to lose? You always want to win. That's what you want to do. Well, when you've got that competitive side, Monopoly Go is something that you can become a big, big fan of. You've heard of it. So many. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities, and it can bring you big money. The best part is you can mess around with your friends. You charge them your rent on your iconic properties like in Monopoly. You rob their vaults of riches for yourself. And the leaderboards will show you who is the biggest Monopoly tycoon. But it's not just your competitive side that loves it. You team up with your friends, people around the world. You get connections there. There's time tournaments. You can earn huge rewards as well. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or on Google Play. Okay, that is a couple of games down. Let's go a little bit longer here. We're going to Hawks and Pacers. Atlanta has no motivation. They are locked in at the 10 seed. The Pacers need to win. They are in that absolute morass of teams. Morass of teams, that's a good word. Um, With the Sixers in that five through eight group. So they can be locked into the playoffs or they can find themselves in the play-in. They need to win the Pacers. The Hawks, again, some of these strategies that these teams employ, I don't really get it. The Hawks aren't going anywhere, right? They can't move out of their slot. But Bogdan Bogdanovich, DeJounte Murray, DeAndre Hunter, Trey Young, none of them are on the injury report. Clint Capella is on the injury report for the second consecutive game, listed questionable with rest. Bro, just rest him. What are you waiting for? Why are you listing him in questionable multiple games? Bogdanovich, Murray, Hunter, Trey, they're not listed. Dylan Windler's out. Wes Matthews is out. Seth Lundy is out. There's no way. Look, you've got a playing game like Tuesday or Wednesday. Why would you play these guys? Like, why? So, I know they're not on the injury report. Look, Jalen's out. Okongwu's out. We know this. They're going to miss the play-in as well. Why would any of these guys play? But like last game, we got 25 minutes out of Hunter, 29 out of Bogdanovich, 26 out of Capella, 27 out of Young, and 31 out of Murray. Why? I don't understand it. So maybe they have a change of heart? I don't know. But I'd feel very uncomfortable trying to rely upon DeJounte or Trey or Hunter or Capella. But then I'd also feel uncomfortable relying upon Kobe Bufkin or Bruno Fernando because I don't know that they're going to do what should be the right thing. 
Indiana needs to win. They should be able to do that pretty comfortably. And they've got a big backup big man problem because Obi Toppin, Jalen Smith, and Isaiah Jackson are all listed questionable. And they are actual legitimate injuries. Toppin's been playing well. He left last game early. Um, Isaiah Jackson didn't play in the last game and Smith's been all over the shop with uh, back and ankle problems. We think they need to win. So I'm not expecting big numbers from those, but Toppin's been a top 100 player. So that is something that's marginally interesting in terms of his value. Because if he is out, maybe they do have to play a little bit of Jalen Smith at the four. Maybe we get some Jarris Walker in there, which would be... Interesting for him. That's where we're at. Wizards and Celtics, could there be a worse game on the slate? I don't know. This could be the absolute worst because the Wizards need to lose. The Celtics have absolutely no motivation. Why do the Wizards need to lose, you ask? Well, they are currently in the two slot in the lottery. They cannot fall back from there. But if they win and the Pistons lose... Oh, sorry. Try again. If the Wizards lose and the Pistons win, well, Washington goes back to having the worst record, I believe, and will get themselves in the number one slot. I think that's true. There's only one game difference. I'm pretty sure that's where they go. But anyway, the Wizards need to lose. They are not locked into their lottery seating. That's according to Tankathon. The Celtics have locked in their slot for weeks. This is what we know. The future MVP, Kyle Kuzma, is out. For some reason, Jordan Poole is questionable. He missed Friday's game. I don't know why he would play. Um, Tyus Jones, of course, remains out. Rashawn Holmes is questionable. Tristan Vukcevic is questionable. And Anthony Gill is questionable. All of those guys are big men. So their status is... It's important because what if Vukcevic and Holmes is out? Then there's a lot of Gill there. What if they're all out? That's a lot of Amari. That is important. For the Celtics... I thought there was a chance that we wouldn't even see Peyton Pritchard play in this one, but it is just the top six blokes. Porzingis, Tatum, Brown, Holiday, White, and Horford are all out as the Boston load managers continue to be the most egregious load managing team in the NBA and in the NBA that we've seen over the last five years. Celtics fans, get triggered. Leave a comment. It's true, and it is absolutely fantastic from them to do that. What is important is the Celtics G League team has Game 3 of the G League Finals on Monday. And guys that are a key part of that are Drew Peterson, Jordan Walsh, J.D. Davison, and Nemeas Keita. Now, I thought there was a chance they wouldn't play and help themselves get preserved for that Game 3. But that is not what the Celtics said. They said that those four guys, Peterson, Walsh, Davison, and Keita, will play minutes on Sunday. And especially like Walsh and Keita, I'm a little bit interested in what they can do. Because they are all, they're all having an opportunity to play some minutes. Again, very weird that you'd play them on a back-to-back leading into Game 3 of the G League Finals. That's what they're going to do. The Bucks and the Magic. Here we go. Both teams need to win. Why? Milwaukee can keep themselves in the two seed. They can fall down to the four seed. Now, there's also playoff manipulation here. Like, if you go to the four seed, you put yourself on the same side of the bracket of the five and the eight seed, which could end up being the heater. It could be the sixes and Embiid. I don't know. You in the two seed, you lock yourself into at least two rounds of home court advantage. So there are motivations for these teams to win. The Magic, like the Pacers, they need to win to keep themselves in the fifth or the sixth seed because if you fall to seven or eight, you're in the plane and you don't want to do that. So both of these teams need to win. Damian Lillard is probable. No one else... Oh, Giannis is out. We know this. Lillard is probable. AJ Green, AJ Green is out. Marjan Beauchamp is probable. Giannis... Yeah, we said Giannis is out. But Portis, Lopez, Middleton, they're all probably, I'm thinking, going to go hard. Now, they didn't have to do much. They got smashed against the Thunder in the last game. They all played limited minutes. I think they have to go hard here because they, they should be looking to beat the Magic. The Magic, the only guy that's there is Wendell Carter Jr., who left the last game with a back issue. If they didn't need to win, he would not play here. But if he is out, then we do look at Goga Badadze and Mo Wagner. They need to win. They cannot afford to get into the plane. They need to win. Pretty obviously. This is a slower show. The Raptors and the Heat. Toronto has absolutely zero motivation. They are locked into their lottery seed with the sixth worst record. Their pick is top six protected. They cannot get to the five slot. 
being in the sixth slot means they are probably likely going to lose that pick. I think it's 50% chance they lose that pick. If you get to the five, they're almost definitely going to keep it. That is not good for them, but they can't do anything about that. They are stuck in six. Miami is in the same group as the Magic, the Pacers, and the Sixers. They can finish fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth. So they want to get out of the plane. Now, the only way they can do that is to win and have other teams lose, but you've got to take care of your own business first. And they will, because Toronto is bad, and they don't care. But the Raptors don't have a motivation to lose. They have ruled out Emmanuel quickly. There is no Mamadou Gay. There is no DJ Carton, but Barrett, Trent, Brown, Olenek, Dick, they're all available. Now, last game, we got you know, only 25 Olenek minutes. We got only 29 Gary Trent minutes, which is pretty good because he was dreadful. But they're still getting around 30, and they probably will do that again. For Miami, um, Terry Rozier is out. It's a little bit interesting. And Duncan Robinson's been upgraded to questionable. Who's like We were not using Duncan Robinson anywhere, but yeah, he is upgraded back to questionable. We had a big game finally from Jaime Huckers last time out. I wouldn't feel super confident about doing that, but what we do know, again, this Heat team needs to win. And Rogier being out means that somebody is going to get extra run. Uh, remembering that Huckers played 32 last game and had 18, 18, 13, 19 the four games before that. And two of those games were without Duncan Robinson. So it wasn't just because Robinson's out, but he could be back now anyway. So another um, tough one to sort of judge got more games to talk about. We'll get to them in a sec. But today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and the most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more players' stats and you watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the playoff action now as well. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the basketball postseason. We've got the play-in round starting in a couple of days. The playoffs start, what is it, April the 20th. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks now as well with as little as four correct picks, turning 10 bucks into $1,000 in the basketball playoffs, the hockey playoffs. Um, do that on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So download the app today and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100 redos. That is downloading the app. That's what you want to do. And you want to go in and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. All right. Slow pace legend Josh Lloyd continues where we look at the Bulls and the Knicks. This is the last of the Eastern Conference games. The Bulls have absolutely no motivation. Like the Hawks, they are locked in. They are locked into the nine seed, and they will host the Hawks in the first play-in game. Their injury report, though, what are you doing? Last game, they sat everybody. No DeRozan, no Vooch, no Desumu, no Caruso. Um, they played Kobe White for some reason. But all of them are off the injury report. Why? Why would you play DeRozan, Vooch, Desumu, Caruso, White? Why? The only guy that's on the... Well, there's two guys on the... Well, Drummond's out. We know that. Desumu's questionable. And Javante Green is questionable. Now, we saw last game, Adama Sonogo went off because there was no Drummond and no Vooch. But if Vooch plays, you're not getting 35 Sonogo minutes, I wouldn't guess. Or maybe you do. Maybe Vooch plays 10 minutes, which, of course, would be pointless. Um, maybe we get Sonogo that way. But I, I would say that, again, the general default you should have, if someone gets listed questionable for rest, like Green, that they're going to sit, even though teams are idiots. And Clint Capella played through a rest tag for whatever it is. So did Bobby Portis. So did Brooke Lopez. No sense with any of that. But anyway, so I don't know about whether Javante Green's there, but this Bulls team where we saw huge Jav uh, Javon Carter minutes, big Javante Green, big Sonogo stuff, big Tory Craig stuff, sort of big Dalen Terry and honor roll but Tim minutes. But that might all be nothing here because these guys are all apparently available to play. And I don't know why. The Knicks, interestingly, rested Hartenstein and Juice McBride last game. They're off the injury report. Everyone apart from Julius Randle is ready to go. The Knicks, guess what they need to do? They need to win because the Knicks, they're guaranteed a home court first round series, but they can finish fourth, third, or second. Getting to second requires other teams to lose, but getting to second would obviously mean that then you get home court in the Eastern Conference semifinals if you win your first round series and an outside shot if Boston loses somehow that you get home court in the conference finals. They need to 
good. And then it's about manipulating your opponents too. But that's why all these games are played at the same time to try and limit opponent manipulation. Whew. All right. Over to the West. When I created this graphic, the Lakers' official injury report was not out. It is now. LeBron is probable. Anthony Davis is probable. And that is it. The guys who are out are out. Vanderbilt, Wood, we know these guys. They're not coming back. For the Pelicans, Brandon Ingram, we knew this was the likely return date, and it is here. He is questionable. Larry Nance has missed the last two games for personal reasons. He is back. He's ready to go. And Najee Marshall, who's played four minutes in the last four games and been injured in three of those, he is questionable too. Both teams need to win. The Pelicans can finish either sixth or seventh. If you finish seventh, you are in the play-in. If you finish sixth, you are not. The Pelicans win, they are not in the play-in. They lose and Phoenix wins, then they are. Unbelievably simple equation. The Lakers, they can finish eighth, ninth, or tenth. They are locked into the play-in. But you finish eighth, you get a double chance. You finish ninth, it's a sudden death game. You finish tenth and you've got to play that sudden death game on the road. So they can be 8th, 9th, or 10th. Both. This is going to be the game where everyone plays big minutes because that the outcomes for these teams are super simple. Win and you get your best possible outcome. Doesn't rely on anybody else. So they are in the spot where they are going to go full balls out, I think, in this game. Cool. What about this next one? The Nuggets and the Grizzlies. Denver, after a shock loss to the Spurs are probably going to finish in this three seed now. If they had a one against the Spurs, they would have finished in the one. But it's they they still can finish one. It's going to depend on a lot of other results. So they need to win. But judging by their injury report, I would suggest that they don't care. Because they've listed all of their starters, plus Reggie Jackson as questionable. Jokic, Murray, Porter, Gordon, Caldwell Pope, and Reggie Jackson are all listed questionable. Are they listening with rest? No, it's illness for Michael Ponder, knee inflammation for Murray, hip inflammation for Jokic, foot for Gordon, shoulder for KCP, car for Reggie Jackson. They've also got Zeke Nagy is now questionable with an adductor, and Colin Gillespie is doubtful with a knee sprain. There is a huge chance that a bunch of these Nuggets guys sit, and then we are looking at Peyton Watson, Christian Brown, maybe a Julian Strouder legacy game. But I, I, I don't know because they still do need to win. As for the Grizzlies, they are one of only two teams that are locked into their lottery seating. It's them and Toronto. Now, you can say Brooklyn is as well, but it doesn't really matter because they don't have their pick. They're sort of, they, they don't care, and Houston don't care either when we get to that. But Memphis is locked in at the seventh seed. I had a Memphis fan trying to argue with me that the Grizzlies haven't been tanking, and their injury report is just, they've just had the most injuries in NBA history. Just a terribly unlucky season, and that all of these injuries are real. Of course, he was living on another planet. And he was completely deluded, but that was what he was thinking. So where are we at with this team? We already know that Jaron's out and Bain's out and Rose is out and Williams is out. Morant is out. Vince Williams is out. Um, you know, Watanabe's out. Uh, Zaya Williams is out. We, we didn't hear any information on any of these guys. We just know they're out. They have now said Santi Aldama is out, who has now missed seven straight. Cool. That's definitely a real injury. Um, Luke Kennard is out for knee injury management. 100% a real injury. That is six, six consecutive games. Well, maybe it's six, but it's six consecutive games for Canard. Scott Pippen left the last game early with an eye injury. He is not on the injury report, so he's good to go. John Conchar hasn't played in 25 years. He's out again with a plantar fascia issue. Brandon Clark came back, played six games. That's the Paul George six-game return plan, which I think I mentioned like a million times. I think someone comes back, plays the six games like Paul George does at the end of the year. I don't know if I said it for Clark, but I said it for a few guys. So he played exactly six games, Brandon Clark. Um, and now he's out with a hand contusion. Wowee. What are the odds? Huh? Why did he come back? Why did Desmond Bain come back? What was the point? Anyway, Brandon Clark is out. John Conchar is out. Lamar Stevens, who missed two games with a groin injury, came back, played 37 minutes, and now missed the next two games. Why? I don't know. Did he come back to play 37 minutes because he wanted to play against the Cavs, his former team? Some might say yes. But that's where we're at. So available players for the Grizzlies, G.G. Jackson, Jake LaRavia, Jordan Goodwin, Scotty Pippen, Trey Jemison, who I don't think has to go to the G League, but watch it. I don't think he does. Um, uh, Captain Hook, Xavier Simpson, uh, tool time legend, Tim, Tim Allen, 
and uh, the Seven Nation Army commander, Jack White. That is who is available. What a shit game that is going to be. Oh, all right. Blazers Kings. This one could... The Blazers might lose by 100. Could we get another minus 50 Scoot Henderson legacy game? Because the Blazers need to lose and the Kings need to win. Why do the Blazers need to lose? Them and San Antonio have the same record. The, the Spurs beating the Nuggets put them into a tie with the fourth worst record here. If you're in the fourth spot, you get a 52% chance of a... Uh, sorry, you get a... What is it? If you're in the fourth spot, yeah, you get 14% chance at number one but if you tie in that spot well your odds go down you have only a 45 percent chance of a top four pick you only have an 11 percent chance at number one overall because you're tied and the odds split so the blazers need to lose and that's where the spurs have sort of dicked themselves over here what's this tiebreakers in real life are random drawing at the end of the season there you go randomness so that's yeah wow that's how that works in the lottery unbelievable um, the Blazers need to lose. The Kings need to win because they are in that same spot as the Lakers and the Warriors where you can finish uh, eighth, get the double chance. You can finish ninth and host a single sudden uh, single elimination playing game or you can finish 10th and have to play a single elimination on the road. They need a few things to go their way. But if everyone wins out, I believe the Kings finish ninth. So they get to host the Warriors. But if the Lakers lose, they can get to eighth. I don't or didn't have the Blazers injury report, but I'm going to go ahead and suggest that Anthony Simons is not available to play. I'm going to suggest that Brogdon's out, the man that we've heard absolutely nothing on. I'll suggest, well, I know Shaden Sharp's out. I think Matisse Thibel's probably not playing. I think Rob, or I know Rob Williams is out. I know Tamani Kamara's out, but... Jeremy Grant's hamstring, they're not even doubtful him anymore. He won't play. The ones you have to watch is Jabari Walker left the last game after 14 minutes with a knee injury. You would think he probably doesn't play. The snowman, DeAndre Ayton, played 23 minutes in the last game. He left early with a back issue. I'm going to label him doubtful. Why would he play? The snowman's done enough stuff. They need to lose. He doesn't need to be there. The Kings, outside of Herder and Monk, who are out for the year, there's no one on their injury report at the moment. No one who's any risk of sitting, I don't think. So they should be ready to go at full strength. You know, a- as full as we can get. The next one. This is where the Lakers and the Kings motivation comes really in. Like they really need to take care of business because the Warriors are going to win. Like, the Kings are going to win as well. That's why the Lakers and that Pelicans game, holy shit, what a game that is going to be. Because the teams, the Kings and the Warriors are, have got auto victories, basically. The Jazz need to lose. Why do the Jazz need to lose? Well, there's the Brooklyn pick, which is behind them. So Brooklyn's Utah's in eight. Brooklyn's in nine. And if Utah wins and Brooklyn loses, they end up tied. Random tiebreaker splits lottery odds. And the Nets don't care. It's not their pick. They're not trying to lose. They're not trying to win. They're not anything. So the Jazz, who've won two in a row, need to lose. The Warriors, who are currently 10th in the West, need to win and hope for a little bit of luck or at least push into nine. Like hope the Lakers lose, the Kings win, Kings go to eight, Warriors in nine. I'm going to go out and suggest, we haven't heard yet. I'm still waiting. We have the, Today is the date of Larry Markkinen's back injury reevaluation. They said it would be two weeks. Two weeks is today. We're waiting to see if he's somehow available to play. Of course we're not because they're lying and if he was always out. Why they said two weeks is unbelievably ridiculous. He is not playing. John Collins, let's go ahead and say he is not playing. Jordan Clarkson's groin, you got better odds of seeing my groin on this video than Jordan Clarkson playing. Chris Dunn with a foot injury, missed four in a row, not going to play. And then Walker Kessler's maybe the one that maybe sneaks in. He's missed five in a row with this nasal fracture. But as soon as he missed that first one or two, where they have to worry about getting a, a, um, a mask in there, He's just not going to play either. So Sexton, Collins, Kessler, Markin, and Clarkson done all out for Utah. I'm guessing. For the Warriors, they obviously need to win. John Kaminga did not play last game with a pelvic contusion. Uh, Bruce Dick, unlucky for him. Gaz Payton, dealing with calf tightness. I would suggest that given, given Gaz's soft tissue injury history, that he won't play. So I'm going to list him doubtful. They Again, they need to win. They can almost definitely get it done without Kaminga. So he's a touch and go one to me. 
The next game. Wow. What do you think is going to happen in this one? Because the Pistons are going to San Antonio to take on the Spurs and both teams need to lose. San Antonio needs to lose because that that gives them an outside shot of having the outright fourth worst or fourth, fourth best odds. But if they win, then they go down to strictly the fifth odds. If they lose and Portland lose, they get to have that tiebreaker and keep the odds split between them. They need to lose San Antonio. Detroit also needs to lose. If Detroit lose, they lock in the number one slot, which again has the same odds as number two, but it means you can only drop to five as the Pistons did last season when they had the worst record again in the NBA. Because they're trash and Troy Weaver should have been fired three years ago. But the Pistons need to lose to lock in number one. They will lose. Or actually, will they? Because the Spurs need to lose too. Wow. They have come out and lied to us, Detroit, and said that Cade Cunningham is doubtful. At least it's not questionable, but the man is not playing. He is not playing. Cade Cunningham is not playing. Why are we doing this? Last game, passport legend Jalen Duran was listed out for back spasms. The fact that they have listed him questionable is a laugh. There is no way that he plays. What are we doing? And if he plays, they are incompetent in even more ways than I could have imagined. Why would he play? The other one is, I had Jaden Ivey as like, I don't think he's going to play. Why would he play? But he's not even on the injury report. I know he's bad, but guys, you need to lose against a team that needs to lose. Ivy is playing low minutes. He hasn't gone over 32 minutes in six straight games, which you'd think, again, with everyone out, they'd be trying to do a lot more. And he played 28 last game in that win over Dallas. They, he, he should not be out there. Fontecchio remains out. Thankfully, they told us he was out for the season. Uh, Stewart's out. Thompson's out. Grimes out. Mude is out. And I, I do believe that Tosan will remain inactive. I think he must have hit his days because they've sat him four in a row. There's no G League games, and I, I would suggest that he's hit his games. In San Antonio, Victor Wembanyama is out. I predicted this would happen when I was setting the rotations yesterday. They basically said as much. He's out. Keldon's out. Chetty Osman's out. Don Barlow is out. And then Zach Collins is questionable, which is very interesting because with Barlow out, with Wemby out, if Collins is out, who's the center? This is why you shouldn't play Duran because he'll have 30 and 30 against this team. The center would probably have to be Mamo Kilishvili. And then who's the four? Raekwon Gray? Pro- Look, there is no other four on this team. That, that Literally, that is it. There is Gray. There is Mamu. That is it. So the Collins one would be an awesome stream, but that they shouldn't play him because they need to lose. Could this game be a 50-51 result? Is this going to be the like the legendary, oh, what's the Daniel Aturo Clippers game? This has got potential to be one of the biggest and most funny tank games of all time. So... Watch for a CD Sissoko masterclass. Watch for um, Jamari Boye take 30 shots. Watch for Ivan Fournier. For, actually, he's probably too good, Fournier. They signed Jalen Noel to a rest of season contract one day. Watch that man take 20 shots. Watch Buddy Bayheim run as the point guard. This is going to be disgusting. The next game is the Suns taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Both teams need to win. The Suns need to win. They win. The Pelicans lose against the Lakers, who are equally needing to win. The Suns get out of the plane. Then they can only get out of the plane if they take care of business. TCB. The Suns need to win, and the Pelicans need to lose for them to get in. But they need to win. The Timberwolves have a shot at the number one seed. They're probably going to end up two, but they need to win to get themselves the one seed. You want the one seed. You don't want to be the two seed and then the Nuggets are the three seed and then your second round matchup is Denver. Although you play the, you're the one seed, your second round matchup might end up being the Mavericks or Kawhi returning for the Clippers. Not easy at all. But you want to win. Drew Eubanks is questionable for Phoenix. Damian Lee is out. And then for the Wolves, Anthony Edwards is questionable. 
And Kyle Towns is questionable. Now, Towns is back. He played in the last game, played 28 minutes more than I expected. I would think that both of these guys play. Although Edwards only played 27 minutes against the Hawks. So they were sort of easing off the throttle and they barely won that game. Although Gobert played 37 minutes. But they do need to win. Maybe they're okay with easing off and they see some results and they pull guys off Giggity early. That's possible too. Um, Mavericks and Thunder. Hmm. <laughs> this is where the Wolves game where you go Minnesota needs to win, the Thunder have no shot of losing. Like, none. Dallas can't move. They're playing the Clippers in round one. So Irving is out. Doncic is out. Originally, we th- I did have Daniel Gafford listed as doubtful, but he is out. PJ Washington is out. Derek Lively is out. Dante Exum is out. Derek Jones is out. Greg Brown is out. Muxy Kleber is out. So there's Hardaway, Green, Olivier Maxence Prosper, Dwight Powell, Markeith Morris, Jaden Hardy, Alex Fudge, AJ Lawson, and Brandon Williams. Josh Giddy missed the last game for the Thunder, but he is off the injury report. So they are ready to go. They will have this game wrapped up by halftime, I would guess. So I don't think these guys play big minutes. So while the Thunder need to win, they will win this by 100. This will not be close. So Shea will play 26 minutes. Giddy will play 23. Williams will play 27. Chet will play 25. Chet might play 12 minutes, honestly. And unbelievably, for all of the talk, no, I'm not drafting Chet. Look at him. He can't hold up in the NBA. All he did was he backpedal and he hurt his foot. He's out for the year. There's no way the guy's going to stand up. He can't do it. 82 games he's going to play. Injury stuff is unpredictable. We prove it every single year. Every single year. It's proven. Chet's going to play 82 games. One could get ugly. Last game. Oh, no, no, no. The Rockets have no motivations. The Clippers have no motivation at all. They're locked in at four. The Rockets don't... Like, they're not making the play in. The Rockets... Theoretically, the Bulls could jump ahead of them or tie them for lottery odds. But the Rockets don't care. This pick is going to the Thunder. Is this pick unprotected? Protected? Hang on. Is, is that unprotected, that pick? Oh, no. Really? Oh, no. That's interesting. I think that... I think that's an unprotected pick. They better hope it doesn't jump up. Anyway, irrespective, they've got no motivation here, the Rockets, to do anything near the Clippers. Um, Fred Van Vliet rested in the last game with a, with an injury, of course, but he, and he's officially out on Sunday. Amen Thompson is playing, and Dylan Brooks is out resting, but that's it. So it's just Van Vliet and Brooks that are out. I don't expect we see Jeff Green, though, but we'll see. But no Brooks, no Van Vliet, so big minutes for Green, Smith, Amen, Landale, Whitmore, big opportunities. Well, the Clippers. Kawhi is out. I thought that they would just rest everybody. Last game against Utah, Harden played 10 minutes. Paul George played eight. Zubats played 10. Powell played 16. Westbrook played nine. Mann played, played five. Terrence Mann has played 13 minutes combined the last two games. Why they, are, why they are doing this and playing them four minutes, five minutes, I don't know. But Harden's questionable. George, Zubats, Powell, Westbrook, man, aren't on the injury report. They are not playing big loads, Giggity. So do not expect big stuff from these guys. So I had them all doubtful. George, Zubats, Powell, man, Westbrook, they're all going to play. Harden's questionable, Kawhi's out. But they're going to play low minutes. So it's just going to be like the other guys. Amir, Amir Coffey, that is. Kobe Brown, uh, Bones Highland, my man, BJ Boston. Big opportunities for those guys in this one. And that is 15 games of looking at the team's motivations. This is a very long show. Hey, by the way, just if you're listening here, I, I won a raffle for, for new Kobe's. I'm sorry, I'm going to go pick them up today. Kobe 4 Phillies. I've never had a pair of Kobe 4s. I've got 6s, I've got 9s, I've got 8s. I don't have any 4s, but I'm getting my first pair today. What an absolute W. So as soon as I finish recording this and you're watching it, I'm off picking them up. Yahoo Points Leagues. Who are we streaming in? Remembering that stuff can change. Craig Porter Jr. Remember that guy? He is good. 
And they have no Garland, no Mitchell, no Levert. So he is going to have to play a lot. And he is available everywhere. I have James Wiseman on that list. Now, I put him on this list when I assumed that Duran wouldn't play, but Duran is questionable. I still don't think Duran plays. It makes no sense for him to play. So I think Wiseman's going to get big minutes. We have had two absolute monsters from Jake LaRavia, and I'm trying my best not to get excited because I loved him as a prospect. He did everything. Scored, hit threes, rebounded, assists, steals, blocks. Amazing. Very similar profile to Brandon Pajemski, just in a bigger body. And then he was dreadful. And the last couple of games, you've been, ah, are you good? Or are you playing on a team that's had 35 blokes on a roster? I still like his spot here. Delano Banton's still available in some spots. We got to go with him if he's there. Noah Clowney should get another start with big minutes for the Nets. And then this man, Ken Lofton. If he, I don't love him as a prospect. I don't love him as a player. I don't think he's an NBA caliber rotation guy. It does not matter. He's getting big minutes and he's putting up big numbers. He's getting assists. He's getting defensive. He's doing everything. And he will do it again. And I'm very interested in picking him up. ESPN points, some similar names. We do start with Craig Porter. I've got Noah Clowney there. I do have Sandra Mamakilishvili, whose value boosts even further if Zach Collins is out. I've got Delano Banton. I've got Jordan Goodwin, who's obviously a very good Yahoo ad as well. And Jake Laravia. Didn't Goodwin have like 20 rebounds or something last game? And his two-way stuff is sorted. We're, we're all good. No problem there. If you're in a category league, just good luck to anyone who's still playing, by the way, and or still watching as I waffle through this nonsense. For the points category, what are we doing? Remember my little... Um, I guess, legend here. My little legend? Sounds like I'm talking about my penis. I'm not. I'm talking about the way that I'm describing these players with their capitalization. Capitalization means 40% available. Italicization means 70% available. No capitalization or italicization means 50% available. So sort of different areas of leagues. Delano Banton, if he's there, we get him. Jake LaRavia for points. Kenneth Lofton for points. They're available in a lot of spots. GG Jackson, he's going to do a lot. He's going to play a lot. He's going to take a lot of shots. He's got 40-point upside. Keontae George. They might actually ramp him down a little bit, but I still, still think he's all right. And then Corey Kispert. That's how bad this guy is, is that even though the team is tanking, they still feel that he should be playing. I'm not sure why they're playing Abdi, by the way, but they are. Um, Three-pointers. Devontae Graham. He doesn't do anything else. But with uh, there is a chance, I think, that Trey Jones might sit as well or be limited. Devontae for threes, I'm in into it. Leaky Beasley, the Bucks need to play. He was better last game. He's going to get chances. The Sandwich, Patrick Baldwin Jr. We, I, I've talked about this guy for weeks, way too many weeks. An unbelievably useful fantasy game. Think Porzingis, but way, way worse. But with no Kuzma, and maybe no Vukcevic, no Gil, no Holmes, he might play 48 minutes. He might have 25 and 15 with four blocks and seven threes. That's an outrageous prediction, but it's possible. So he's a three-pointers guy. Corey Kispert, yep. Lonnie Walker. They're going to have to give him more shots. I think they maybe marginalize Cam Thomas a little bit. And if they do, then it all goes towards Walker. But with no Schroeder, with no Dennis Smith, as a meteor falls on my house, um, we look at Lonnie Walker. And then Sam Hauser for threes, of course. I do have yeah, Peyton Pritchard's obviously going to be worthwhile and looking at all these spots as well. I, I do worry that maybe they say you're actually important to our playoff rotation, so we keep you back a little bit. But he's been awesome lately. For rebounds, I do have Mason Plumley here. I again, they make it hard because they don't have Zubats on the injury report, but I don't think he's going to play. But they could also use Tice in this spot, so Plumley's there. Clowney, yep, Jemison. I don't think there's a G League problem, but I, I've got like a 2% chance there is. So he's an interesting rebound guy. Ken Lofton, I like. Sharmanich, I like. Why they're starting Yurt 7 and playing in 15 minutes, I never understand, but that's what they're doing. And then Mama Kalashvili could really get, like he could get 20 rebounds here without Wembenyama and maybe knows that Collins. For blocks, another big man category. Noah Clowney, he's got six block upside. We love that. Jackson Davis is going to play his 23, 24, 28 minutes, get four blocks upside. Jemison's got four block upside. Luke Cornette has got three or four block upside in Boston. Peyton Watson, we know. He just had six blocks the other day. And if they sit everyone, he might get six again. And then John Isaac's got four or five block up, upside. He played 28 minutes last game. They need to win. And if Wendell is out, he'll play a lot more center. He becomes interesting. Also, you throw Goga Badadze in there if Wendell Carter happens to be out. 
For field goal percentage, Trace Jackson Davis, I continue to like him in that spot. I like Luke Cornett. Jim Wiseman, with the caveat of maybe Duran's in, maybe he's not. Mason Plumley, I've got Nemeas Cater in there. He's not going to do anything apart from dunk, but that's good for us. And then Trey Jemison. And as we bring this, I don't want to let go of the regular season. That's why this show's going so long. I love the show. I love doing what I do. Assists. Craig Porter Jr., I guess. Scott Pippen, I love here. TJ McConnell gets six or seven in 20 minutes. Jordan Goodwin's got double-digit assist upside. I do unbelievably have Blake Wesley here. Now, he might be just terrible, but there is no Malika Branham. He is out again. Wesley started. He was bad, but he did start. The other guy I'd chuck in there is maybe a CD Sissoko who could get some extra playing time and some extra assists or even a round repair if you want to go second round French ball handling wings. If that's your jam, they're two guys. And the other one there is um, one of the worst players in the NBA, Taylor Horton Tucker. But with all those guys out, he's getting minutes. And unbelievably, they have won two games in a row with him in the rotation, which is just not something you can say as a usual thing. But Horton Tucker is on the board for us here as an option. And I hate saying that out loud. For steals. The big fella, Chemezi Metu, is going to play a lot of minutes in Detroit, so we like that. Trey Mann doesn't appear to be a guy that they're limiting in Charlotte. I don't know why that is, but they're not, so we go with him. Jaden Springer, I tweeted this out. Who's going to be the bloke who's under 5% rostered who has the biggest game? Now, we've already seen Sonogo drop a 20 and 20. I think Stringer could have like a 24, 7, 10, 4 steals, 4 blocks output. It's possible. I like him for steals. Keon Ellis, it's like a roll of the dice with Mike Brown, but we do like his upside there. Chris Murray's playing 40 minutes a night. If Jabari Walker's out, he might play 48. And he can get some steals. And then Jake laravia has been getting some steals in pretty good bunches as well. And the last slide is free throw percentage. Keontae George up the top. Jake laravia good free throw guy. DeAndre Hunter, Luke Cornett, Tim Hardaway, and Aaron Holiday in Houston with no Van Vliet. The Hardaway's one is interesting. There's no, everyone's out. Him and Jaden Hardy are going to do a lot, and you could throw them in the points and the threes category as well. There are a lot of options all around the NBA for many different categories, and things are going to change. Like, watch the random questionable tags. Watch the Bridges-Millers one in Charlotte. Watch the Hornets, uh, watch the Clippers with their guys, not on the injury report, but not playing. Look at teams' motivations. Which teams need to win? Which teams are saying, yeah, we need to win, but maybe we don't, like Denver. Maybe we don't care. That's why everyone's on that injury report. I don't know why I this show went as long as it did. I apologize. We're 52 minutes in. And if you are still here, well, yeah, you're just the best. And if I could come around and lick all of you on the face, I would. And if you're into that, well, you can drop a tongue emoji in the YouTube comments. We're getting pretty wild here. Hit the thumb up, ring the bell, leave your comments, subscribe, and absolutely the best of bloody luck to all of you legends out there in the final day of the regular season, whether you're playing DFS, whether you're finishing a Roto League, or whether you've actually lost your mind and playing a head-to-head league at this point, good luck. And if you're in my rotisserie league and you've got games left, please take a point away from Mitch Casey. Please take a point away from Mitch Casey. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.